every single time they do something, a copy will go to the, the account of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And so are you. Every time you tell your wife, every time you tell your children, every time you tell your uncles, every time you tell your khalat, every time you tell your ammat, every time they do something that you tell them to do, you will get that reward bi'idhdillahi azza wa jal. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only these, this was, it was Arkham ibn Abi Arkham, Abu, Abu Salama ibn Abdul Asad, many, many companions, his prosecution. Everyone, many people used to face persecution in Makkah and he wanted to face what they're facing. So he would go on the doors and he would go knock on the doors. He go on the doors of the Kufar and the Mushrikun and he's knocking on the door as if to say, Hey, why are you hitting my door? You know I hate Muhammad, I hate his message. Why are you come hitting my door? You want some trouble? So he would go out there willfully knocking on the doors of everyone. When the Muslim reached 38 in number, Abu Bakr says, Ya Rasulullah, Nasta'alim, let's go give this message in public. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, this is not a good idea. Let us stay in secret. Let's stay in secrecy. He goes, no, come on. And every time he would, Allah means he, 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 he overpowered the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet says, fine, let's go. They went into the Kaaba and he got up and he said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad al abduhu wa rasul. Immediately the people rushed him and they start walking him. They start beating him to such an extent that Utba ibn Rabi'a, he took out his shoes and he walked him in the face tremendously. Blood was everywhere. You couldn't see his face. You couldn't see his nose from his face. And then they took him home and when he regained consciousness, his people were standing in front of him. As soon as he regained his consciousness, he says, Kaifa fa'ala Muhammad. How is Muhammad? His people said, Muhammad is the one who caused this to you. If it wasn't for Muhammad, you would never be battered in your face. Now we are here to protect you. Before you ask about yourself and you ask about Osla, you ask him about Muhammad and they walked out. His mother, his father said to his mother, go give him food. He says to his mom, Kaifa fa'ala Muhammad. How is Muhammad? She goes, come on, I'm giving you food. You ask him, Muhammad. He goes, look, I will never eat food unless you tell me what's the affair of Muhammad. Go to Um Jamila. She went to Um Jamila. She says, my son Abu Bakr wants to know how is Muhammad. She goes, as for your son, I don't know about him. As for Abu Bakr, I don't know. Muhammad, I don't know. However, I can go visit your son and see what's happening. She was hiding her Islam. Because there was only there were only 38. Not 38,000. 38 in number. 38. She took him to uh, Abu Bakr and she, he says, How is Muhammad? She says, Your mother is listening. As if to say she's afraid to speak now. Then she goes, he goes, look. Don't worry about my mom. She's fine. Whatever you say, secrecy. She goes, Muhammad is fine. He goes, I will not still eat unless you take me there. When he went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they took him and he was in a state of tiredness and everything. He goes to Muhammad and he says, the Prophet says, how are you? He goes, look, I'm fine. I'm just cool. It's just this little thing you see on my face. Just this little thing you see in my face. No complaint. He never said, oh, you caused me harm. You caused me stress. You, you idiot. Wallahi, look at this kalam. He was beaten up badly. And he is only saying, you know what? This is minor. It's cool. This was the affair of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. In the Kaaba, he was the first Muslim speaker. Not only the first to accept Islam from the free man. He was the first 
to be the public speaker of Islam and he was a forced Khalifa. He was beaten up by Ibn Rabi and Banu Taim intervened and then they, 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 they stopped the beating and then Abdullah ibn Amr Ba'as was asked by the Tabi'in, what's the worst thing you have seen? What's the worst thing that you have seen in your life? He says, the worst thing that I have seen in my life is a day when they, they beat him mercilessly, subhanAllah. Abu Bakr, you, he, he goes, why are you beating this man? Are you killing the man because he says, Rabbi Allah? Just because you say, Rabbi Allah, they kill him? And in every nation, they will kill you. In every nation, the people will kill you for saying, Rabbi Allah. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَبِيبِ the king and the boy and the sorcerer. When he killed the boy and he stuck with the whole nation, became Muslim, he dug massive ditches and he put fire and he put them into the fire. He didn't put them in the fire for no other reason other than saying, Allah is my Rabb. Fir'aun used to kill the people, subhanAllah. In every generation, kingdom ruled, every single one. They were tyrants. And, and hell is for tyrants, ayyuhal nas. So this is nothing new. Our ikhwan who are in prison and who are having injustice in their land and who are being oppressed in their lands and their homes and everything. This is ibtila. Test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Test from Allah rabbul alameen. Ali as the Khalifa, he was standing on the member. He goes to the people, Ali, when he was the Khalifa, he stands on the member, he says, who is the most brave and courageous man you know in history? They knew Ali was a warlord. They said, you or Ali? He says, no. The most courageous and brave man is Abu Bakr. I saw the people beating him in the Kaaba. I saw him protecting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Kaaba and saying to the people, Ataktuluna Rajulan Ayyabula Rabbi Allah, are you killing the man because he says Allah is my Lord? And he says, I saw him on the day of, of Badr when we made the tent. There was no one to guard Rasulullah in the tent, no one volunteered. In fact, Ali Abu Bakr volunteered and he was walking around that whole tent the whole time, looking for enemies from every single direction. The most brave, the most courageous. If you want to go fighting or you want to go do something, you might need some bros, some men next to you, some ashab, companions. But he alone is standing, guarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ali radallahu an, he took the cloth that he had, he covered his face, and he was shedding tears like a baby. Look at this. They acknowledged and they knew Abu Bakr was outstanding, most honorable and noble man. He was a very noble and respectable man. And he further said, He asked, he said, who are the best? The believers of the movement of Fir'aun or Abu Bakr? The whole nation of Fir'aun believers on one side of the scale and Abu Bakr on the other side of the scale will outweigh them. Every single hour in the life of Abu Bakr is more worthy than the whole world filled with mu'min of Fir'aun. A statement from Ali radiallahu an. Ibn Kathir says he used his money to use to support the da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umayyah ibn al-Khalaf, Umayyah ibn Khalaf was a very, he was a mushrik and he, he used to, um, he had a concentration camp. He had what's known today as Guantanamo Bay. So he would take the people and he would suffer them tremendously. On that day he had Bilal ibn Rabah. He would have Bilal taken out in the heat, the sand, and he has his, 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 his servants take a, take a big massive huge boulder, put it on his, on his chest and leave him on scorching sand naked. And then he says, I will keep you in this state until you give up the religion of Muhammad or you die. Abu Bakr Bilal ibn Rabah 